Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ. Hi, it's good to be with you all again. Uh, we're about two or three weeks into this ordeal now, and I uh, hope you're surviving it okay. We are. Um, we're probably going to be trying to have uh, these encouragements for the day on a daily basis for a while. Um, the reason for this is after you have a loss like we've had, a loss of freedom to move around, a loss of the ability to be together, you know, those first two or three weeks we sort of feel a novelty with it and uh, we kind of rise up to the occasion and, and we make it through and and all seems well. But after three or four weeks, uh, the reality of it all seems to settle in. And that's the period that can often be the hardest after we are grieving through a loss like we are. That's really multifaceted. And so we want to offer you these encouragements for the day a bit more frequently to try to, well, to be an, a source of optimism for you, for you and a source of encouragement for you and so that we can be back and forth with each other in a way that lets us know that we're going to get through this. Uh, what I want to do is to uh, talk about the 23rd Psalm and we'll do it on three different videos and today I just want to talk about verses 1 and 2 for a minute. Uh, you know King David, uh, if, if we think about this, think about just how profound it is that he called God his shepherd. Here David is a king, one of the most accomplished statesmen really to ever live in history I think. Um, he was an extraordinary athlete. We know that from Bible stories we've heard since childhood. He was an outstanding musician and a poet, Renaissance man. He seems like he could do everything. Uh, but here he is calling himself a sheep almost. He doesn't use those words, but if God is his shepherd, he's seeing himself like a sheep. Well, what's a sheep like? Sheep are notorious for being antsy, uh, roaming about without direction. They have to have guidance. They have to be steered uh, in the right way that they're supposed to go. Uh, they're pretty anxious creatures. And for someone as accomplished as David to acknowledge that he needs a shepherd really tells us something. And so he says, the Lord is my shepherd. And then he says, I shall not want. And so here is this perhaps most accomplished human being of his day, realizing that the reason he doesn't have need of anything is because he has God. And God is his shepherd. The second verse says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. Like I said, uh, sheep are very anxious, antsy. Uh, they're liable to go here and there and you know anywhere without having much of a sense of direction. And they don't settle down and rest very easily. They're just not calm creatures. Well, David is saying that God leads him to these green pastures to where he can relax. He can sit down and enjoy a breeze. Um, Shepherds don't do that much either. Shepherds don't relax much either. They work very, very hard. Kings don't do that much either. Uh, if I'm trying to put my place in the king of Israel, I don't know how they had time to take a breath and, and rest. But David said God leads him to green pastures, to lie down in green pastures. He also said he leads uh, me beside still waters. Uh, sheep, when they would need a drink, they would often be taken to a river, which was not that big of a deal to get them there, but they wouldn't drink from a normal river. And the reason for that is because they were afraid of the moving water. Sometimes there were mild rapids or ripples. They just didn't like the movement. They were skittish about it. They were not comfortable going in to moving water and taking a drink. So it was the responsibility of a shepherd to grab a bunch of rocks and to uh, place them in a in a area with a design that would 
hold the water back a little bit, enough water would be allowed to go inside the rocks to make a still pool. And if it was still and not moving like that, then the sheep were not afraid of that. And so then they would go in and take a drink. And so David is telling us that we're like sheep and God's providing a still water. And we need that nourishment from God. You know, I love that word still. Uh, it has a connotation of comfort associated with it. And my understanding is that the Hebrews would often use it with reference to a resting infant cuddling in the arms of his or her mother resting against her body. And it, it carries with it the idea of, okay, there's the infant's been up, awake, and now it's time to rest, and there's this big sigh, just a, uh, and then he or she dozes off to sleep. And there's not much more of a beautiful image than a mother taking care of her infant. Uh, there's no greater caretaking than a mother taking care of her child. And David is saying this is the way God is for us. Our times are turbulent. They are uncertain. They're filled with anxiety. But there is a green pasture where God leads us to. There is a still water that he leads us to so we can nourish in what he provides us because he's our shepherd, just like he was for David. Let's pause for a moment and pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for being our shepherd, and we know we are like sheep, and we need your guidance, and we need your direction. And Father, we just entrust ourselves to you because we don't always know which way to go. Uh, we have several who are afraid. Some may have experienced some financial hardships at this point. Others are wondering about the future for their health and their loved one's health. And Lord, we just thank you that we have a shepherd. And so in the middle of our isolation and some of the stress that is accompanied by that, help us to see ourselves in your hands as a sheep and you're guiding us and you're taking care of us and we can relax with you. So, Father, we thank you so much. And, Father, we do ask for your powerful, calming hand to calm the hearts of those who are burdened uh, by this situation. And there are many. And we ask you to guide those who minister to them, uh, those in the medical field, those in mental health, uh, those who are spiritual leaders. Father, guide all of us. Uh, may we see you as our shepherd and have confidence that you are leading us in the way we need to go. Thank you again so much. and We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tomorrow we'll be looking at verses 3 and 4. And until then, you guys take care. God bless.